This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Front wing. <sighs> yep. We're back again, everybody. <laughs> We're back for Fruit of Grisea. We got one more route that I promised to do. Yumiko's route. Yep, yep, we're bringing this series back for one last hurrah. Let's just get it over with so we can move on to better games. <laughs> yeah, we took we had to take a bit of a break from this because uh, this game is uh, deeply uncomfortable to play and kind of terrible. But at the same time, it's like a train wreck. It's so bad you can't look away. And to be fair, when this game is good, it is really good. So here's hoping the good will outweigh the bad. So yeah. I, this game is truly something when it can make the Sundere girl, like, actually, genuinely the most likable character. And it, not because the Sundere is actually likable, just because everybody else is so much worse. And now we're now we're going on the route of the murder girl. This is, uh, I probably should, uh... Oh, yeah, I uh, probably should not be doing this. Also, because it's a visual novel, everybody, this can only mean one thing, and that is, of course... Water ASMR is back again, as is the rule for visual novels, and especially this game. Anytime a character says something particularly outlandish, cringy, stupid, inappropriate, or offensive, I take a nice, long sip. So we can just reflect on how terrible the situation is, and also because I will need water. To quench my first, because I'll be doing a lot of talking in these visual novels, because I have to read out a lot of lines. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. It's a drinking game, but with water. Yes. Uh, I have a very love-hate relationship with this game, uh, Simpsons R Us. Uh, so I've I've marked this as my first playthrough. This is a visual novel that has like five main routes. I have played through two of them on my channel before. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot that has already happened and has happened in alternate timelines in those routes. So yeah, there's some this this game can be quite painful to go through, but also like I said, the writing can actually be very good when it is good. All right. No Enough stalling. Let's... Alright. Where's my old save? Okay. Um... Which one of these is... So that's for, that's the... file for Michiru's bad ending. I think this is the file for when we went on Michiru's route last time? So I think we load this one to begin with, and we can decline going on Michiru's route, and go on Yumiko's route instead. How many weeks of this stream is going to take? It's going to take a couple months, probably. I don't know how long Yumiko's route is, but, uh... Th this game is quite long. And then, I guess, as context for this decision... Uh, Michiru, I think, is kind of staring depressedly out at the ocean on the cliffside. And we're like, hmm, I wonder, like, if I should talk to Michiru. And if you say I want to ask you something, you go on Michiru's route. So we're going to say, no, it's nothing, we don't care. And here we go. We go back to Yuji, the worst protagonist in the history of anything ever. Actually, a worse protagonist than Caillou is. <laughs> oh, oh, also, for those of you who are watching who don't know, and for those of you who are watching on YouTube who didn't get the memo in the, the first part of this, this game is absolutely 100% rated M. This is not family-friendly at all. I'm going to try to keep my commentary relatively family-friendly, but I'm going to have to be reading out some inappropriate stuff, most likely. So, um, just as a heads up, so you guys know this, this is not what I usually play, but I do like visual novels, and like I said, the storytelling can be very, very good. No, it's nothing. I'm overthinking this. This strange little interlude must be nothing more than a new part of her act. She'll no doubt be back to the normal Michiru soon enough. Oh... Okay, so I'm picking up a little bit more on this now that I've completed Michiru's route, so, uh, spoiler- any, Anything I say in these are going to spoil Sachi's route and Michiru's route, so... I think what right now we're talking to Michiru's alternate personality, not actual Michiru. Ugh, oh, sorry I scared off the cat. Yeah, this is her alternate personality. 
I'll g I, maybe the maybe the cat will get to live in this timeline. I see. All right then, I'll be heading back to the dorm. Oh no, not you! Ugh, I hate this girl. <laughs> hmm, her condition appears favorable. There's nothing in particular to be worried about. Do you know who you're talking to? You're talking to Kazumi Yuji, the worst person ever. I checked up on her. Isn't that sufficient? I'm not the girl's father, you know. I'm not obligated. I'm not obliged to spend all day nursing her. Um, Apollo Justice is better than this game, hands down, not even close to being a question. <laughs> Apollo Ju well, I guess Apollo Justice did have some, like, kind of cringy moments with all the panties, but... Uh, this this takes it more than one step further down the line. Let's just say that there was there was a time where I had to literally uh, <laughs> I literally had to go to a different like blank screen just because the CG was literally not appropriate to show on Twitch or YouTube. I probably would have gotten banned from them if yeah. Mm. Also, one thing to point out: uh, <laughs> how many more car accidents will be in this route? Because thus far, I've only done two of the routes in the game, there have been five car accidents that have played a role in the overall story of the game. Five! <laughs> like, if you have three, that's already, like, too much. Two is kind of pushing it, four is way too much. Five is just overkill, man. Like, th there are more things that can happen to these characters other than getting into car accidents. <laughs> what, you still have a problem? She'll return eventually. Oh no, not you! Oh, she's the worst. This girl is this girl's awful. She's got it. She swears like a sailor. She looks and talks like a six-year-old girl. Also has the personality of a six-year-old girl. And she's a romance option. We are not doing her route ever. Also, she has an extremely grating voice. Listen up, Machina. Everyone needs to be alone at times. It's a basic human need. Respecting that is very important. You understand? At least she's got a cool name. I think, canonically, Makina's supposed to be, like, 14. But let's be real, she's 6. An excellent case in point. I, thank you, Yuji! I agree. <laughs> this is gonna be a long stream. Uh, not necessarily. Here's the thing about Grisea streams. I can't stream these for very long generally speaking, because this game actually kind of is physically painful for me to play through at times. And also because I'm talking so much, I eventually my voice gets close to giving out, so I, I generally don't stream these for more than like two to three hours. But yeah, it's going to take a while to go through these. Hi Proxima, welcome. <laughs> you you haven't really missed anything, we just had the intro. Alright, hi Sachi. Yeah. I'm sure she. I'm sure she's fine. <laughs> yeah, there isn't a problem. I guarantee that. Just as promised, Michiru returns shortly thereafter. I spot her walking down the dorm hallway, chewing on something that, with reinvigorated expression of a woman who just passed a kidney stone. You and your weird metaphors, or similes, I guess in this case. You're back, it would seem. <laughs> Oh, I bet she's eating her ramen candy, aka drugs. What are you eating? Oh, never mind. To be fair, though, the ramen can't the ramen candies are prescription drugs, not like oh, she's just munching on methamphetamine. <laughs> Mm. Everyone's so mean to Michiru. Ten bucks says Machina gave her something that's supposed to be inedible. <laughs> I like the Meyer brand stuff. I think the nuance of Machina's real might be slightly different from what Michiru thinks, but it's probably best not to mention that. I see. Anyway, are you feeling better now? Yeah, 
Is that Michiru doing well too? <laughs> hmm, I see. Make sure you get to bed early tonight. Rest up and recover your health. Did she just throw something in Michiru's mouth and Michiru doesn't know what it is but just started chewing? One other thing, Michiru, take some stomach medicine tonight. If possible, get it from Sachi, not Makina. Because if you ask Sachi, she'll give you the real stuff. <laughs> yes, it's definitely super effective. Just do it, alright? I want to ask her how she knows what pencil dust tastes like, but I already know the answer to that. With this, the Michiru incident drew to a close. Human beings are multifaceted creatures. It's perfectly normal for someone to change their tone of speech depending on who they're addressing. Fairly significant shifts in their personality aren't uncommon either. No, that's not really true at all. Something or other aspired in a atypical behavior for Michiru today. But I have no idea what the root cause was, and when you get right down to it, it's really none of my business. <laughs> but that's none of my business. <laughs> There's a line I shouldn't cross here. If I want to avoid tracking my muddy footprints all over my classmates' fragile hearts, I need to continue to exercise such restraint as long as I live in this place. Yeah, every so there are like six people in this school, we're the only dude, and everybody here has serious mental issues why they're here. That's kind of the setup for this game. <laughs> Everyone has their weaknesses. Human beings aren't omnipotent, if anything, we're largely powerless. And so, we must also be resourceful. We're born utterly impotent, and no matter how long we live and how much we learn, we'll always have more weaknesses than strengths. Our resourcefulness, then, is the tool by which we work around these fundamental shortcomings. Sometimes we find a way to conquer our failings, more often we learn avoidance, ways to, f to keep them from hurting us. Whatever the means, in the end we get the ability to scrape by. As weaklings go, we're a hardy breed. Ah uh, yes, the classic Yuji internal monologue about his thoughts on humanity. Hmm? One afternoon, just as I'm leaving the shopping area in front of the train station, something catches my attention. I draw to a halt and turn to look. <laughs> oh hey! It's Murder Girl! It's the girl whose route we're going on! <laughs> Yay! How could this go badly? I'm honestly kind of hopeful for this. I'm hopeful because Yumiko, unlike Sachi and Michiru, is, uh... <laughs> Much, much less likely to put up with Yuji's crap. So I'm hoping that uh, they both become better people in this route. But something tells me that's not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, Yumiko, how can the clerk help you? No need to get cross. <laughs> Looks that can kill, and those who cringe in terror. If this were in Nagasaki and a few hundred years ago, uh, you might guess someone had splashed mud on a samurai. But this is a modern town, not far from Tokyo, and that right there is a young woman. Ah, it's Sakaki. Just a moment ago, I'd sensed an ominous foreboding aura across the street, powerful enough to inspire a momentary surge of concern. Thought there might have been some terrorist attack in the making, but I guess it's just Sakaki being Sakaki. Might have been a bit on edge since I just paid a visit to Ichigaya to take care of some minor chores. That's the place that he works at, and he's like a secret service agent, and he's like in high school, and he kills people for a living. Yeah! Either way, I investigated the situation for safety's sake, only to find an individual in some ways more troublesome than your garden variety terrorist. Maybe this route will get more it's rated M because of cool action scenes, unless it's rated M because you're having sex with people. That would be, you know, that would be good. <laughs> I don't want to have to watch through any more of these. It, blech. Moving on. Sakaki Yumiko. A curt, antisocial classmate of mine. Should about cover it. 
I'm rather amazed to find that she's capable of projecting such a ferocious aura as to fool my carefully honed instinct for danger. It seems she's still capable of surprising me. Quite impressive, really. Though it's not likely that many schoolgirls would particularly enjoy receiving that sort of compliment. Still, just what is she doing over there? <laughs> Sakaki stands under a colorful yellow and red striped awning, glaring powerfully through the glass at the interior of a small store. Since the girl's usually defined by her emotionless, disinterested, and asocial vacuum of a personality, the intense passion in that gaze is somewhat surprising. You know, she got... <laughs> I can't believe I say this. She got better. <laughs> Not by much, but she got better. <laughs> Hi, Sachi. Also, don't be inappropriate. Sachi, having snuck up beside me at some point, offers a typically helpful suggestion. Fantasies? Sachi, why are you like this? How do you generate clips from streams? Uh, you press the clip button shortly after you uh, the scene that you want to clip, and then you can select the area that you want to clip, and then you hit clip, and then copy the uh, link. Hope that helps. Why are you? What are you doing here, too? I don't want to talk to you. Did the whole school come here? Not mocking a thing on this. Look, I'm not asking for a description of your sexual fantasies, Sachi. I'm just wondering what Sakaki is doing in front of that shop. Maybe to buy a crepe. You ever you ever thought about this? This game just takes a simple thing like, hey, Yumiko goes to the store to buy a crepe because she's hungry. And then it's like, how can we make this awkward to read through? I know what we could do. Quickly outpaced by the conversation, I attempt to get things back on topic. In the next moment, someone yanks vigorously on my sleeve. Oh no, don't be Makina. Please don't be Makina. <laughs> Doggone it! <laughs> Not you! <laughs> That's someone being Makina, of course. She's got a comically proud expression on her face. I'm reminded of a toddler reporting that she went poopy all by herself to her parents, in full expectation of their lavish praise. You know, that's actually a very accurate metaphor. Still weird! Still wouldn't write that myself. But you know, it is apt. Also, yes, literally the entire school followed Yumiko to the crepe store without telling her just to spy on her. This is very weird. I hardly think this girl is likely to have any accurate information, but I suppose it can't hurt to ask. Well, Makina, do you know something about this? What's going on with Sakaki? She's buying a freaking crepe, you doofus! <laughs> If that's actually what it is, then that would be pretty cool. That would turn into a very different kind of game. <laughs> this is now it's civilization. Great. Thanks. You're a big help. As expected, asking Makina was an utter waste of time. How, how are you not understanding this? Not that I'm expecting anything resembling a coherent answer, but I just can't help myself. Why would Sakaki need to do a thing like that? Yeah, she likes playing civilization. Hmm... When you use that disbelieving everybody knows that tone of voice, it almost sounds convincing. Mm-hmm. Violently snatching people's stores just to wipe them out of existence is her human side? Even for Sakaki, that seems excessively malicious. I've been talking with these people for several minutes now, and none of them have said anything remotely insightful. Or even coherent. Have they collectively lost what little sanity they had left? You're really one to talk, Yuji. And also, yes, believe it or not, Yumiko might be the only normal person in this whole game. Or at least out of the people attending the school. And she literally tried to murder us multiple times when we first started coming here. That's that's saying a lot, man! Like, that's really saying a lot. Obviously, the only truly normal person in this game is Principal. But, actually, no, not even she's not that normal. After Yumiko was trying to murder us, her response were like, hey... Students trying to murder us. This is the problem. She's like, have you thought about what you could be doing differently to help this issue? This is a common thing that you encounter in a typical high school. It's like, no, it's not. Yuji, 
I just assume that everybody's stalking me now because I'm the only boy in the whole school and y'all are thirsty. Huh? Oh, right. That's because I sensed your presence nearby. Personally, I thought that bit about the whipped cream earlier was significantly more ridiculous. What was that all about, anyways? Don't bring it back to this! I don't want more discussion on this topic. <laughs> nope! And that kind of gives you an idea of why I hate this game so much. You reached a consensus on that? The initial topic was ridiculous enough, but how the discussion might have developed toward and arrived at that conclusion is completely beyond my comprehension. Press X to doubt. I definitely think Amine started this, but I'm pretty sure everybody tuned into this. Is this my most hated game I've ever played on my channel? Ooh, that's a good question! It's either this or Mighty Number no. Nine, for sure. This has higher highs and lower lows. But it's a different kind of low low, because Mighty Number no. Nine was infuriating just because of how not fun it was to play, because the level design kind of sucked. This sucks because the writing is awful and uncomfortable to go through. Mighty Number no. 9 is, I'd say, the only Let's Play I've done that I've actually regretted doing, and I wish I hadn't uploaded videos for it. I thought it was going to be like Mega Man, and it kind of was, but it was nowhere near as good. Yeah. I must admit, Michiru might be the least gross out of all of the characters in this game, but that's a low bar. She called you she called you pure as the snow and you interpreted that as her calling you a slut? I don't I don't understand why the writers wrote what they did for this. We're going through a lot of water today, folks. <laughs> this Mitra's face right here is my favorite character expression in the entire game. W without a doubt. It's hilarious, and yes, it is slightly terrifying. <laughs> There's also a more terrifying version of that face. I'm sure we'll be seeing it. Michiru definitely has the most comical facial expressions. How has Yumiko not noticed us at this point? There are five of us, all together, making a racket, and we stand out like a sore thumb. Yuji, Yuji and Makina are the only two characters out of the bunch who have, like, normal hair colors. Michiru does not have a normal hair color because she is Japanese, and it is explicitly stated that she dyes her hair blonde. She's not a natural blonde. Well, you know she never leaves home without her box cutter. <laughs> Even though we're outside. No, I don't want to see you. Seriously, again, I ask which people wrote this down in a script, showed it to people to be like, hey, this is our idea for a dialogue in the game. What do you think? And multiple people all read these words, and were like, hmm, yep, that's good. Let's have it in the game. Machina's cute. No, do you know what cute means? She'd be cute if she was six. She's not six. She's 14. It's not cute. 
So I'm kind of getting the idea this is a deliberate surveillance operation on your part. Covert activities of this sort are well within the range of my professional expertise, and this noisy crowd of schoolgirls would have to be the single least competent operation I've ever seen. I feel mildly dizzy. Well, let's put a positive spin on it and say, uh... I'm always seeing new fiends when I'm with these people, although I'd never, ever want to work a job with them. Uh-oh. I think she noticed us. Of course, you can't say Sakaki's much better than the rest, since she still hasn't caught on. Wow, she's very unobservant. Maybe she's just intensely reading the crepe menu, being like, What what flavor do I want? Do I want the chocolate crepe? Maybe the Hawaiian crepe? No, no, no. I'm gonna get the savory crepe. She's staring intently at a piece of paper in the shop window. Perhaps she's finally tracked down the menu that killed her family. <laughs> See, every so often, they, they have a piece of dialogue that's actually witty, but... Not often. At least, I hope that's a menu. If that sheet of paper has the manager's name written on it or something, I'd have to assume Sakaki's trying to place some sort of a fatal curse on them. <laughs> Look, Aminate, they've got like 225 different flavors of crepes. It's an important decision to make. Even, th even though I think Yumiko has a big budget, like her dad owns the school we attend, and is like this massively built, like businessman, so uh... I, I have to assume that her allowance is a little higher than mine. <laughs> Can you please just order already? <laughs> hmm. In other words, you people have been here for a half an hour as well. I mean, forget Sakaki, what's your objective here? I was originally thinking you came as a group and just sent her to buy everyone crepes. <laughs> yeah, because Yumiko's actually like, No, I am not going to do your dirty work for you. You're you're trying to be adults. Do your own stuff. <laughs> she wants people to be responsible. Am I uploading this all in one big stream? or I, gonna... I split this up into multiple parts. For sure. I try to split them up into roughly half-hour video chunks. Hmm. You do have a point. <laughs> okay, this face is pretty funny, admittedly. Makina, what is wrong with you? A group stalking? You guys really get along. Six-year-old has a point. But I just coincidentally happened to... Well, no, I guess you're right. Can't really deny that. Forget it. The truth of the matter is, I'd realized halfway through the sentence that defending myself would require a tiresome explanation, and decided to follow the path of re least resistance instead. It's one of those little tricks I've resourcefully picked up on to make my life among these people easier. She's trying to figure out what flavor crepe to buy. How do you not figure this out? Either that, or she's meeting up a different friend here, and they are ghosting her. But she, because she's staring intently at what I assume to be a menu. They, this isn't... Again, they're stretching out a really simple thing into a lot. Well... think so. Whipped cream and fruit rolled up inside a thin omelet, right? Not that I've ever eaten one. Well, no. Maybe I did once or twice. But judging from the way I can't personally recall the experience, it can't be that memorable of a treat. Crepes can be good, if they're done right. I mean, in all fairness, I'm basically not all that interested in food in the first place. And the crepe is a sugary thing aimed at women and children. It would be downright strange if I was interested in it. This bro has such a sad life. He's like, I don't really like food. <laughs> I don't understand. Desserts are for the weak. <laughs> I don't like you giving me the I want you eyes. I see. I think I finally understand the situation. In short, they're all just bursting with sheer curiosity. After all, our cool and collected Sakaki appears to be moaning after a sugary treat. What kind of crepe will she order? 
What's the look on her face going to be like when the moment finally comes? How will she eat it? You... These people are so weird. Dear Lord. A new side of Sakaki Yumiko. A face that she keeps carefully hidden from us might well emerge in that moment. Normally this sort of event would hardly warrant such high expectations. Yes! Yes! This is not exciting! <laughs> You'd expect Sakaki to casually buy something in her usual apathetic way, then casually eat it without any particular expression on her face. But for some reason, Sakaki appears to be seriously conflicted instead. This tantalizing hint of something out of the ordinary has clearly fueled the group's hopes. Oh, God. <clears throat> See? I, I, I think I lose a couple IQ points every time I stream this. Sakaki, every ounce of her concentration focused on the menu in front of her, glares into a window like a thug trying to intimidate someone into submission. I can't say I've ever seen anyone buy a treat with an expression like that on their face. What on earth is she thinking at about at the moment? Maybe that's just her default face, okay? Not all of us smile as our normal expression. Some of us look like we're really ticked off all the time, but we're actually just thinking about nothing in particular. Makina, what are you doing? What the heck is happening? What the hell was that? Right, but why did you bother? <laughs> she blurts that out, ma'am, this is a Wendy's. Okay, look, not everyone is as bipolar as you are. Sakaki might seem fearsome at times, but this girl is frightening in her own right. I'm just gonna preemptively have my finger on the mouse button in case she says something really inappropriate. You're supposed to be the responsible elder here, right? Don't get caught up in mocking his games. Since when the heck is Amine supposed to be the responsible one? I mean, she's more responsible than Michiru and Makina, but like, you don't even have to jump over that bar. That's because I believe Sachi and Makina are canonically 14 years old, and I think you're canonically like 18 years old. You got a couple years over them. You're supposed to be acting more mature. That's how it works. I'm treating you like the adult you should be. Yeah, thank you. Also, do me a favor and don't try to talk like the kids these days at your age. It's just embarrassing to watch. I feel personally attacked about that, Yuji. I, I have unironically said kids these days before. Forget it. I give up. Do what you want. Amine moves the conversation right along with all the lurching resilience of a drunkard trapped in the height of a midlife crisis. Instantly, I feel the air around me freeze solid. I'm not... I'm not reading that. Ignoring this completely, Amine forges on ahead with her monologue. <coughs> <laughs> Please stop. Please stop. You are disgracing yourself as a human being. I'm playing this on Steam. So, PC. Your beloved Kansi is the cultural capital of Japanese comedy, isn't it? Can't you tell the difference between a safe joke and one that's just awkward for everyone involved? No. <clears throat> wow, this is a lot for just the first episode back. Good lord. I thought maybe this one would be less inappropriate. Nope. They're they're leaning full into this. Oh lord. I I shouldn't be playing this on a Sunday. I need I feel like I need to make myself right with the lord afterwards. Too, did you go too far? You started so far over the line of what's okay that, like, you're not even going to be able to find your way back, Amine. 
Makina asking the real questions. I'm only, you describe yourself as her big sis. You basically are her mom. Finally crushed by the awkward atmosphere, Amine slowly crumbles to the ground in shame. Well, you know what? Sometimes shame is okay. I think we need to have shame. It's a natural feeling. <laughs> Some see it. Seems Michiru was anticipating this possibility, as she's been keeping uncharacteristically quiet and inconspicuous since the comedy routine started. To no avail, of course. Something close to panic spreads across her face. ええ、ここで大切なのはみんなが作った雰囲気に水を差して壊さないことです。ミチルさま、お分かりですよね。ああ、分かったわよ。この恨み。See, <laughs> this is where the game actually gets fun to play. <laughs> And we have our thumbnail! <laughs> oh, yes! I'm always on the lookout for good thumbnails to use for the YouTube VODs. See, this is far more enjoyable than the others. Do not say that was the worst one. No, that was by far the best part of this episode. Okay, that part was actually pretty good. <laughs> I also hate how everyone's super mean to Michiru. Like, for no real reason. Michiru lets out a strange, piteous wail and collapses to the ground. You people are seriously cruel. No, I don't know. Cannot relate. That a fact? You guys are just jealous because she was doing way better of a job than either of you were. Michiru responds to her friend's tough love by curling up into a fetal ball next to Amine. But I'm not so well versed in these matters, so if Makina says this is motivated by affection, I guess I'll have to take her word for it. And this is why nobody ever does anything to make Michiru feel good? I mean, don't get me wrong, Michiru can be incredibly obnoxious, and, like, definitely is not very smart, but she does not deserve to be treated this way. It's one of the reasons why, like, again, she's a tsundere, but she's actually my favorite character in this. Partly because of her hilarious facial expressions, and her voice actress is also really, really talented. What, me too? Hi, well, I guess not. Go <laughs> there we go. <laughs> is that a fire in the background? <laughs> yeah, th this is like the creepier version of Michiru's like I hate you face. <laughs> but again, it's still hilarious. Why did you feel the need to declare that? What a mess. Then again, even this nasty little game is nothing compared to the many seriously unpleasant varieties of humor I've had to deal with in the workplace. Cautiously tuning out all sensory data, I turn my focus completely inward and rapidly begin to devise a plan. Speed is crucial in this sort of thing. A gag centered around Sakaki, eh? Maybe I'll play up the gap between her girly tastes and violent personality. Seems like it might fit the bill. Alright. That should work. I raise my head. To find everyone has vanished. Amine and the others are gone. Even Sakaki, who had been pointed like a statue in front of the crepe shop throughout our little routine, has suddenly gone missing. <laughs> okay, either he spent hours trying to think of the plan, or they were never actually here to begin with, and he's just going crazy. No, I guess she's still around after all. She's not currently in my field of vision, but there seems to be someone emitting an aura of murderous anger behind me. 
and there is no mistaking this menacing metallic sound. Seems she managed to sneak up on me at some point. Oh, hi! <laughs> hey, rabbit! <laughs> Just came to see how things are going. <laughs> hey, that's a nice box cutter you got there. What are you planning to use it for? Hmm? Uh, hold that thought. Can you try saying, excuse me, which would make a better weapon? Banana or strawberry flavored crepes? Just an experiment. <laughs> if you're looking, if you're trying to find someone who looks like she's about to kill me, it's this girl. Alright, right. Uh, sorry, forget it. You wanted to know what I was doing here. I was observing you, Sakaki. <laughs> and Murder Girl's back! Sorry, but that's well beyond your capabilities. As I think you've known for some time now. When I turned back, Sakaki was indeed waiting for me. Despite the anger smoldering beneath the surface, there's no obvious signs of rage on her face. She's expressionless, as always. I guess I should interpret that as a positive thing, but it feels more like a letdown. I might have been interesting to see some naked emotion from her for once. Where did the others go? You know, how did you know? Yumiko knows us better than anybody, and she, honestly, she's the only one who's like, you guys are terrible people. And she's she's kind of right. Oh, so that's what was going on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were all kind of racking our brains trying to figure out why you were just standing there like a statue. To be more precise, we were amusing ourselves by inventing ludicrous theories. But I might as well leave that unsaid. I really don't think it's that big of a deal. I, Yumiko, I think you're the only one who's coming out of this looking clean, to be honest. Like, you were doing a, a fairly normal thing and everyone else is just like, Ah, she's so weird. Ah. <laughs> Let's say inappropriate fades for no reason. Oh wait, I didn't read that line, did I? I guess it's so. Were you able to buy a crepe in the end? Didn't want one anymore. Yeah, it's funny how you lose your appetite when you've got your five friends all staring at you for a half hour, making fun of you. I see. Contest! <laughs> hmm? Ah, right. Were you still discussing this? She's oddly talkative. I mean, if she was going to give me the real story, why lie about not wanting one in the first place? I hear ya. I see. Right. I, I, I get it. That hard a choice, eh? <laughs> that a fact. Sorry, I guess I missed the cue. Sakaki averts her face uncomfortably. I do feel bad about making her joke fall flat, but I seriously didn't catch it. To be honest, I still don't understand when or why I was supposed to laugh. Well, I guess the two of us just aren't cut out for this sort of thing. Sakaki may not be much of a comedian, but I'm hardly the best audience. So you never ended up making a decision. Then why not buy it? But you're not holding a crepe. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, the clerk's just like, Why is this girl staring at the crepe menu for a half hour? She's weird. Is she gonna rob this place? She's got a box cutter in her hands. <laughs> Did you just stare at him, then? Well, yes. Since you were standing there glowering like the incarnation of Raph, I expect any potential customers flood in terror. I see. Again with the menacing metallic sound. Not that it's a particularly intimidating one to me. Of course, Sakaki has to be aware her fret is as hollow as, uh, is hollow as well. 
I expect she's unsheathing her blade mostly as a means to concentrate her hostility, rather than in the expectations that it will make an effective weapon. Don't jump to conclusions, but yeah. Once you got that crepe and started eating it, I thought I might get to see you smile happily for once. Simple as that. Yumiko, do not tell me you're going to fall for that. Sakaki? No, he didn't. He's lying out of his butt. Well, I'm a little interested, yes. Sakaki's only reaction to my statement is a disinterested grunt. Yeah, you, you are not wrong. If it seemed that way to you, then I can't argue. Sorry about that. Say what? Nobody eats like that. Is she just eating the crepe with like a scowl on her face? I'm really not sure how to respond to that question. This was the punishment handed down to me. I am required to watch intently as Sakaki eats her crepe. Apparently, Sakaki plans to use this opportunity to crush my expectation that eating something sweet would prompt her to smile. Of course, this involved sending me into the creperie to buy Sakaki her treat. I have a nagging suspicion that may have been the main point of this exercise. Hey, Mobius! What am I doing streaming on Sunday? Because I like streaming every weekend, and I was too busy to stream on Saturday, so this is why we're streaming on Sunday. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> you are joining in for a very awkward game <laughs> right now. <laughs> Although, I think you've missed a lot of the uh, awkward stuff, but I'm sure more will come in the future. We just spent more than a half... What the heck? We spent almost 50 minutes just focusing on this girl not being able to figure out what crepe flavor to buy, and people being like, I wonder what she's doing. <laughs> that said, I don't think I've ever seen anyone eat a dessert quite this expressionlessly before. <laughs> oh yeah, well, I mean, to be fair, last night for Mario Kart, I never intended to join, but in the evening, I wasn't really doing anything. I did not have my headset, so I couldn't join the Discord call, so I'm just like, ah, I'll just join, see what people think. It was fun. <laughs> oh wait, did I read that? She's obviously take it, doing this on purpose out of sheer stubbornness that it's taking a conscious effort to keep my amusement from showing on my face. Sakaki speaks triumphantly, an expression of superior scorn spreading across her face. Well, I have to say I was surprised. Hmm. Guess so. Her face tense with concentration, Sakaki earnestly devours her treat. To be honest, it looks a bit... dirty. Well, with the whipped cream and all. You are an idiot. Well, there is no point making things even more troublesome, so I'll keep that thought to myself. Sakaki, bl uh, blissfully oblivious of my perspective on the matter, crunches and munches loudly at the crepe. <laughs> 